Has anybody ever just wanted to go on a walk? Anybody ever tried that? You know, um, you know some of the best uh, conversations I've ever had in my life have been on walks with a trusted friend, a confidant, um, where we really talked about life stuff, important stuff, stuff that we don't talk about in the real world. And you know, over the last 400 kilometers, um, we've had all kinds of conversations and really deep, um, emotional, um, gut-wrenching, um, joyous as well. And, and um, you know, in 2009, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I wrote Playing with Fire. But um, I remember the first book signing in Toronto when uh, you know I, I'm ADHD, so I'm really brilliant. So you know, <laughs> very um, aware of everything that surrounds me. And so I saw a gentleman uh, in line, and uh, <clears throat> he had playing with fire clutched to his heart, and he could barely even walk in line and uh, I remember him taking some very very long and slow steps up to the front where I was book signing my book and uh, he got to the table and he looked at me and he said me too and since that day 500,000 Canadians have also said me too and uh, I really believe that's a positive thing because those people have never ever been able to utter those words, me too. And because sexual abuse has shame attached to it, um, and the shame is really never ours to bear uh, in the first place, and, and we're certainly not victims, you know, because it happened to us. And, uh, you know, when you're that young and, and you're still trying to figure out what life's all about, you know, when you reach into your toolbox, there's nothing there to be able to deal with the percussions of what, what happened to you. And, um, and so for me, it's not always easy, you know, it's not always easy to be that sounding board for the whole entire country, believe me. Uh, it, you know, you can ask my wife, you can ask the people that work for me, you can ask the that love me and care about me, how, to, how it's, you know, affected our lives, and, uh, but they're all very strong, wonderful, loving, caring people, and they also know the importance of all of us staying strong as a team. You know, my background is team, I only know team, you know, for the first 36 years of my life I got team for free, and, uh, got an opportunity to be coached by some of the greatest coaches, got opportunities to play with the greatest leaders. And the one thing that stood out to me of all of them is that they didn't talk. They always, always took action. And I appreciate the job that you guys have to do on a daily basis. I know it's not easy. But an acknowledgement by this government, by any government, that says that this is the biggest epidemic on the planet, guess what, will go a long ways. That you, if you would just acknowledge the fact that this is happening and that you're trying to do something about it in the best way you know how, which is through the political arena, which I understood today as to how this whole thing works, so I will be less hard on you as I go from here. Um, but, um, but I think if we, if we acknowledge the fact that it's going to take a long time for change to happen, we can accept that. We can accept that, we can work with you, um, and we can be a part of the change. But. There's 8 million Canadians out there that I've seen and looked in the eyes 
that have no place to go, nowhere to turn to, and you know the three charities that we're supporting through the Victor Walk are actually places where people are healing in this country. And you know one of our groups is the Quinney Sexual Assault Center in Belleville, Ontario. And I went to a golf tournament two years ago, and I was introduced to a bunch of gentlemen who were also survivors. And I looked at them, and they had twinkles in their eyes, and they were happy, they were laughing, they were hugging each other, and having a great time. And 